Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. Thanks for joining me and today I wanted to take a look at India. Now India obviously is a, a very ancient country. It was part of the Tartarian Empire, if you look at the maps. And a ton of, you know, amazing old structures and what I wanted to look at today is a place called the Red Fort. Now this is actually the Red Fort in the background. This is um, 1860. And you can see it's got a few domes up here, big fort, got a nice bridge here. Going over this river, which looks like a bit of a floodplain. I'll just show you a few more pictures of Delhi. These are all sort of 1850s, 1860s. As you can see, completely built out with big brick buildings. This is an old fort, Tugla Quabar, and as you can see, this one's just been completely decimated. This is actually the wall you can see here and here, and it just keeps going around here. We've got a turret here, another turret there, and it's just been destroyed. And it looks like there's more structures down here, and I think these are people, so you can see how big this place was. This is... Um, an interesting, what's it called? The, I'm not sure how you say that. Kut, Kut, Kut Manar. But it's just this massive obelisk. And it's big. Um, I think there's a picture, and oh, it's the same one. It's, it's, it's really, really quite big. And just look in the background here. Domes, domes, you know, I've got all these ancient structures everywhere. 1880s there. Some traditional bankers. Indian bankers, well, they're called Delhi. I don't think they call themselves Indians. Another view. This one's interesting. We've got the domes. So see the ground level here? And see the ground level down here? Now, this is obviously a bridge or something. But clearly, this road level's up here. And, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. You know, are these all half sunk? That that looks <laughs> pretty sunk, that one there, doesn't it? And this is uh, inside the Red Fort as well. So this is the kind of structure it is. And all completely, you know, done out with, you know, what we're told is Islamic, you know, or Moorish kind of finishing and artwork. And just a view of a Delhi Street, 1947, this one. And look at this structure in the background. Of course, it's got a flag on top. And this Emperor Humayun's tomb. Now, I found this interesting just because look at this. I mean, it looks, you know, it looks like a mini version of the Taj Mahal, but it's a tomb. Like so, in you know um, Egypt and sort of Africa, we get pyramids, and of course, all pyramids are tombs. <laughs> and in, in India. All these kind of um, buildings are tombs. They're all called tombs. So they just brand everything the same. This is uh, the Red Fort we're going to have a look at as well. 1858. It's got these on top, which we see everywhere. Again, you can see this is slightly, this is the different architecture. So, um, you know, Tartarian, what, what I'm, I mean, even though this is Tartarian, this is India, so this is Tartarian, but see how these, windows point up and this is like the what we're called uh, sorry what we're told is the sort of islamic kind of architecture because they point up where with the other style it's just you know arches so there's a few differences with them there's just the finishes are different as well it's just sort of slightly different so these are all rounded um where on the other type they're squared off but yeah you can just see i don't know is that looks like is that three people sitting down you know, a bit of mud up here in front of the building, but just looking very barren and very old. Very old and weathered. It looks like it's been sitting there for ages. Oops, what happened then? And this, um, I believe, is another tomb. Yeah, see, so this is the same thing. Same kind of building, and of course, this is a tomb as well. And this is just another building in near Delhi. Jama Masjid, 
no doubt this is a tomb in the background, but look at this, it's a big castle. So you can see it's the same style of architect, of layout, you know, big walls, big turrets, towers, but different finishing, different look to it, but no doubt they sort of had the same purpose. And again here, this picture, you know, just a couple of people hanging around. This obviously, you know, this is half in the ground. Look at this wall here. Got all these archways. I'm not sure if they're bricked in or if they were like that. But this is obviously built up. Look at this, how much it's built up to this front gate here. So that very much looking like the top of a building that's been sunk. And just look at what's around it. Just dirt, rubble, bits and pieces maybe of other structures. And this I found really cool. Group of uh, Rangres or die case, die case, <laughs> sorry, die cased members. 1863. So look at them. They're just sitting around, you know, with these sort of primitive, you know, tools, technology to, to for dyeing clothes. But look where they are. They're just standing in this massive old world building with arches and columns and. And this is the parody we get. You know, these guys didn't build this. They couldn't build this. But they're living in it. They're using it. So how old are these structures? I think that's it for there. So just a couple of pictures uh, of India. So let's have a look. Now this red fort, it's in um, a region called Agra. So Agra is... Um, move that for you. Agra, yeah, so it's a region in India. Here's a red fort um, and it's also where the Taj Mahal is. Uh, it's actually, there's a place called the Golden Triangle, but it's not drugs. It's the Golden Triangle um, in India of tourism. And so this is where Agra is. So Agra, also known as Lai Quilla or Agra Red Fort, is an impressive fort in Agra in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, since 1983, that has been included on UNESCO's list of World Heritage Cultural Buildings, of course. Agra Fort is located 2.5 kilometers northwest and, uh, of the even more famous monument Taj Mahal. So Agra Fort is probably the most significant fort in India. The great moguls, including Babur, Humayun, Akbar, Jehajur, Shah, Jahan and Aurangzeb. <laughs> hope I did okay with those words. Uh, they all lived here. They have the capital here. So this used to be, this building we're going to, uh, that we're looking at is, it used to be a, the capital, they're saying, of India. With its current location, um, it's founded by groups of Chawton Rajips who used burned bricks for its construction. So burned, I'm not sure I'm guessing they're meaning fired because I hope they're not trying to say this is made of mud brick because it's not. Uh, the time of construction is unknown, of course. So here we get into this story. So the fort is first mentioned in the annals of 1080. So, you know, a thousand years ago, when an army force of Ghazni um, Afghans conquered it, Sikandu Lodi from 1487 to 1517 was the first sultan of the Delhi Sultanate who moved to Agra and lived in the fort. From here he ruled the country and Agra gained the status of the country's second capital. Sikandar Lodi died in the fort in 1517 but his son Ibrahim Lodi remained in the fort for nine years until he was overcome and killed in 1526. So basically they say it was built in 1080 or the first mention was 1080 then nothing until 1487 when a, um, a sultan moved in and they occupied it uh, till 1526. And they, I mean, they say it doesn't know when it was built. Uh, then Mongols came in, you know, they conquered the fort, blah, blah, blah. And this is how these stories go. Basically, the forts get built um, and then they get conquered, they get knocked over, they get rebuilt, they get extended, they get conquered, they get knocked over, they get rebuilt, they get extended, they get extended. And this is the stories we're given. And so that's the exact st um, same story we're given for the Vatican as well. You know, they just sort of start off as these buildings and just get bigger and bigger. This is what we're told. So it says, 
Sher Shah held the fort for the next five years. In 1556, Mughal forces finally defeated the Afghans in the Battle of Panipat. Upon subsequent inspections of his kingdom, the great Mughal ruler Akbar realised the significance and central location that Agra had in the Indian Mughal kingdom. Therefore, he decided to establish its capital there in 1558. Um, he describes the palace was dominated by a brick fort called Batagala. It was dilapidated and partially lay in ruins, after which Akbar rebuilt it into red sandstone. Architects had designed the foundation and it was built with bricks on the inside and with red sandstone on the exterior facade. In all, about 4,000 construction workers participated and they worked on the fort for eight years before its construction was completed in 1573. So basically, again, this is the story. It started off <coughs> 1080, first match, and then someone moved into it. You know, they lost it, got attacked, you know, then someone decided to move in, rebuild it, because it was all broken and dilapidated, and they sort of turned it into what we see today. Uh, from then, it's pretty much stayed the same. Um, all it really talks about is the Indian uprising against the English in 1857. One of the battles at Agra Fort took place. Uh, the British later fought the uprising, but the uprising marked the end of the British East India Company's self-governing rule over India. So they actually used this fort um, in one of the final battles to get rid of the English, though. <laughs> Don't know if you can ever get rid of that English law. So that's a bit about Red Fort. Now there's also a canal in Red Fort. And it says the canal receives its water from the Yamuna, Yamuna River, 10 <laughs> about 10 kilometers, to, uh, excuse me, about 10 kilometers to the south of New Delhi. The weir across the Yamuna uh, was constructed of locally quarried stones. It was about 800 yards long and rises seven feet above the summer level of the river. So they're saying that they built this dam, which is near this fort. It's in the Agra region. Uh, the canal flows a route south to the southeast, 140 miles, in the highland between Kari Nadi and Yumuna. Finally joins the Utagana River, 27 miles below Agra. So it's you know, they're saying they've built a, a big dam in a weir and rerouted this uh, quite large river. And it says the canal was opened in 1874. In the beginning, it was available for navigation in Delhi, Gurugan, Mathura and Agra districts and Baraputu state. Later, navigation, so they're talking about boats using it. Uh, later, navigation was stopped in 1904. And the canal has since then been exclusively used for irrigation purposes. Okay, so they built it 1874 and they were using boats on it. And just 30 years later, no more boats. It's just irrigation channels now. I mean, so what's happened there? It's obviously not deep enough that they didn't dig up. You know, did these guys build this or have they really just gone in and, you know, renovated it? Have they gone in there and just said, well, this is ours, we'll clean it up. And when they've done it, they've realised that it's not deep enough and they can't keep boats on it. Because um, uh, look at these pictures, you know, it's, it's a big earthwork and you can just see, you know, there's people here with no tools, little carts sitting here. So this is a bit about Agra. So let's have uh, a look at some pictures of Agra. Uh, so this is the Red Fort at Agra. As you can see, huge construction. And this is, you know, we've got the round turrets here. These look like they're missing their tops. This huge, you know, construction. It's look at the wall. It's it's massive, this place. These are some small people down here. You know, we've got doorways, we've got raised levels. So this this is the inside of the fort because there's a big wall up here. The wall goes around here and there's also, that must be the outside wall maybe. I'm not sure. But even just look at the finishes on it. <clears throat> you know, I've got these doorways everywhere. I mean, this it's, it's the amount of brick that must have gone into this thing. There's a, um, a star fort or a fort called Fort Jefferson. 
in the Florida Keys. It's the largest red brick building in the US, they tell us. Uh, it's a big um, octagon, and it has 16 million bricks in it, and it's nowhere near the size of this thing. This is an old picture, just showing that um, it's an old structure, and they found it dilapidated. This is from the 1800s, early 1800s, I believe. And look at these the weathering on these pillars. Uh, you can see this one's in good shape, and these are just this one's just destroyed. You know, something's hit this, it's all smashed out. This is the main gate at the Red Fort, and look at these walls and these turrets. And then we get this. Okay, so in the in that story, it said that the construction was red brick. It said it was red brick or brick, and it was faced with red sandstone. And this looks like brick to me. You know, brick that's been you know covered and plastered over. So, is it a completely brick building that's just you know had its uh, been plastered to look like great stones, like you know like a lot of the buildings we've seen? You know, I think it could be, because look at these bricks, they come straight up, and it looks like they've just forgot to plaster this bit. Now this, guys, look at this. So this is what I wanted to talk about. This is part of the Red Fort. And they're calling this a well. Uh, there looks to be a lot of irrigation type things. Um, around well within this fort as well and then we have that you know the big weir and the dam it's all connected all the same sort of um, region the same you know planning the same kind of not structure but you know they're all interconnected and <laughs> this is in the middle of the fort and look at this step work now there's stuff like this very similar in other places there's some in South America I've seen it around though these Definitely something in South America. I can't remember where else. But I mean, just look at the work that's gone in here. Now, are these steps is the question. Because I don't think they are. I mean, you just look at how this works. I think they're made to run water down. So I think it's to do with water. <clears throat> but see how this... It's just so perfectly done. The symmetry is just... Amazing, but if you can imagine, you know, if you had water running down here, I mean, you could use that either to oxygenate water, or were they doing it to somehow, you know, get hydrogen out? Was it some kind of power? Or was it just to clean water? Um, I don't know, but that's that's a pretty amazing structure. Imagine the work that, that would have gone into this. Okay, we've got water down the bottom, and this is why they call it a well, but obviously it's a massive hole. But then we, oh, sorry, <laughs> God. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, got this. You know, this is a classic old structure coming straight down here. Big platforms and just these steps going down into the water. And are these these look like, you know, the tops of towers. And on top of these, again, we have these this step sort of formation and little domes on top and here it again in here the steps sort of look you know it's sort of mirroring this so lots of bricks too so what do you think this was for here's another shot of you know it's pretty deep pretty steep I mean do you really think that they built this as a well and there were just people just walking down here getting their water and then walking all the way back up. I mean, if you could build this, you wouldn't be walking down. You'd be, you'd have a machine that was going down and getting the water, bringing it up for you. That's just a shot again of the construction. This is an old shot of it. Uh, part of, oops. This is, uh, it's not part of the Red Fort, but it's a building in the Agra region. And again, just, sorry, you know, look at the landscape, you know, it's just, there's nothing there. This, and this is looking very old. It's lost all its domes. And it looks like it might, it might have lost its roof as well and all the glass from the windows, which we see so often. And it's just sitting out there in the middle of nowhere. This is the 1860s, I believe. 
this is the dam again, you know, brick construction all the way around it. This is their opening it, so they've really just turned up and put flags on it. And it, like I said, they shut it down in 30 years. They put all this work and all these construction. I mean, that would have cost a lot of money, a lot of time and effort just to make the bricks for it. And 30 years, no, sorry, can't use it anymore. And, and why would they be building bridges like this when they said that it was used for navigation? What ship's going to get under that? You know, so this is clearly just, if this was designed and built when they said it was, whoever designed and built it was clearly just didn't know what they were doing. You can't get ships under that. Ridiculous. 1878, I think that says. So these stories we get are just silly. Now this is that tower I showed you at the start. And just look how wide it is. These are the people. Look at the size of this thing. And again, look, this is brick. Look at it. That's a brick construction. And look, but even when they've even done the different colored brick, are these different, um, you know, like resistances? Is this some kind of resistor or I don't know. Just look at the work in it, and it's just done so precisely that this is pointed, this is rounded, this is pointed, this is rounded. See that? And just massive, just humongous. Look at the size of it. That's just sitting out there in India. God knows how long it's been sitting there. And when things like this sit there, if you're born there and you see it, you know, your whole life, you just get used to it. You don't really question it. And look at these, I don't know what these bricks are. See, they're two that are sitting out here, just jutting out. But anyway, that's huge. And yeah, this is the big gateway in front of it. The gateways, you know, we see them all over the world, don't we? Um, um, this is the Taj Mahal. And see these big spires everywhere. Again, you know, these structures, I'm not sure what they do yet, but they're everywhere. And it looks like we've got some old carts in the front there. So this is the tech. Okay, you can see some old wooden carts here. There's a dude here and a dude here. Now, I'm not sure what these balls are. Maybe they're just, yeah, okay, they look like vases, like to carry water or something in. Okay, so this is the tech. And, and they've got this in the background. And, and they're asking us to, be, to believe that this was built probably, what was it, Taj Mahal, 1700s, I believe. Um, a, a prince, apparently his wife died and he built it for her. Um, I would suggest that he, he just refurbished it, rebranded it. Because this is, I mean, look how old and weathered this tower looks. Just these bits sticking up everywhere. And, and the, look at these lights. See these? Now they're the same that you see everywhere on the streets. And, and the, you know, the, the black ones, you see them all through the cities. And just looking at that, they actually do look quite a bit like these, don't they? These, these lamps that we see everywhere. So something else. Um, again, you know, this is the Agra region, and it just looks decimated. This again, um, mid-1800s, and just look at the landscape. It's just, it just looks smashed. Um, unfortunately, this is a sepia tone, so the contrast isn't the best, but you can see there's bits of a building or a structure sticking up here. You know, this is the ground level, and it's being washed down to here, but We've got plants growing, so it looks like it's been this way for a while. It's at the top of a structure, or I don't know, a bit of rubbish or a table, and just sort of refuse around through the ground. But trees in there, and our plants have grown back. <clears throat> so how long has this been like this? You know, I've got a road here, and <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like you can't even get up, you know, to the, to the doorways here. You know, you see it? It just looks smashed. But, you know, beautiful, beautiful old building, old world architecture. 
And this, this is the Red Palace in the background. No, <laughs> massive domes, spires, towers. Now, these same shapes everywhere up here as well. And yeah, what happened in India? Because we know that obviously the British moved in and took over and the same old story. You know, they didn't actually gather up all the information and burn it like they did in South America. They just re-educated the youth and destroyed it that way, like they did in America. They being the parasites. <clears throat> Here's another shot, you know, very mud floody. You know, what's happened here? You can see this is completely buried. Big bits have just snapped off and been thrown around. These guys are just sitting there, sitting, you know, set up for a photo. Now this, this isn't mud. You can see this is completely full of rubble. And it looks like it's probably what was up here. But we still have these towers. You know, look at these towers. Look at the tops of these towers. I mean, what's going on with these? I haven't seen anything quite like that before. They're really skinny and then popping out. But, you know, dome, 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 you know, tower, tower, tower. And just look, look at all the holes here. It looks like it, see all through here? All these holes? It looks like it's been shot up or something. Or maybe an explosion and these are bits of shrapnel. I mean, it just doesn't, that doesn't look like natural wear. I mean, especially on this column here. <clears throat> So India, I mean, come on, what's going on here? This is another old shot. This is, um, I believe this was saying it was the Indian Wars. As you can see, it's just all mud. But we get these massive structures. And this, I don't know, I think it might be an old plane, like the, the hull of a plane, the fuselage. And the Taj Mahal, an old shot of the Taj Mahal. So you can see it's in the middle and you, it's got these two buildings, one on each end. So it's a, it's a complete kind of structure. It's not just this. You know, we've got a big tower on each corner. And then these domes. Doorways are lining up. This through the middle and out to here. So just looking very much like, I don't know, a component of a machine or something much bigger. All right. So the irrigation system, those wells that we saw, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, actually there's one photo I just want to quickly, yeah, I just want to show you this quickly as well, this picture, this is in the Red Fort, this is just in the ground in front of one of the buildings, and I mean, look at how, look at how stylized this is, you know, it's almost a reverse picture, see, we've got this out and then it comes back in, um, Almost the reverse, but it's more rounded. But this again, this is like a well kind of thing. Well, this is what they're calling it. All the water runs down here, and it and it, it's part of the irrigation system. It's part of what fills up that the other wells that are you know around, or what they're calling wells. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that, um, and wanted to have a look at oh this guy. How Feroz Shah, the father of irrigation system in India, created the largest baoli in Delhi. So instead of wars, Feroz Shah Tuglak decided to spend more time and money on city planning, construction of public buildings, roads, water channels, and utilities. So he sounds like a good guy. And we, we get sent things like this around this region. I'm sure they're probably all over India and no, no doubt the world. Uh, but this is basically, um, like a, they're calling it a well, you know, a place where people could go and get water. Um, very ornate well. So this guy, Feroz Shah, um, from 1351 to 1388, took special interest in strengthening the infrastructure of his empire. Not only did he build new structures, but also invested time and money in repairing buildings built by his predecessors. One of the best examples would be the Kutab Minar, which is that huge um, obelisk thing we saw, uh, which was extended by Tuglark to its present state consisting of five stories. Feroz Shah is more famous for commissioning buildings, actual shapes that were seen as unconventional during his era. 
He is also considered the father of irrigation system in India for channelizing rivers to provide water through canals to a large part of the country. Okay, so he's the father of canals or irrigation. And back here, when we were looking at this canal, it said that they built it in 1883, was it? Uh, sorry, 1874. And it said that, first of all, it was for ships and navigations and what they were getting under this bridge. And then later on, now it's just for irrigation. So did they build that in 1874? Or did this guy build it in the 1300s and they just uncovered it and re, re, you know, got it working again? You know, they thought it was big enough for boats and they realised boats couldn't get under those bridges. Uh, so it just reverted back to irrigation because that's what it looks like. Feroz Shah Tukula came to, sorry, Tuglak, came to power after the death of, death of his cousin, Sultan Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Muhammad uh, was known to be a lunatic king. His decision left the treasury dry and the economic collapsing. Feroz Shah avoided the throne for a long time, but due to pressure from the nobles, he eventually agreed to be the third sultan of the dynasty. Instead of wars, he decided to spend more time and money on city planning. Good on you. And here we have another construction. This is called the Baoli with the Ashokan pillar above the pyramidal structure. Oh. So if we look at this, these are all called Baoli. And Baoli is... And as you can see here, Baoli, um, it, it basically means stepwell. Okay, so stepwells are what we saw. Here we go. So this is one of the deepest stepwells in India. So these Baolis, uh, what they're saying is, is he's built these as, you know, not as grand as these, but all over the place as wells. So stepwells are ponds in which the water is reached by descending a set of steps to the water level. They may be multi-storied with a bullock turning a water wheel to raise the water to the first or second story. They are most common in Western India and found in other more arid regions in the Indian subcontinent extending out to Pakistan. Uh, they may include embellishments of architectural significance and be temple tanks. Everything's a temple. Everything's a temple. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, today this fort, well, okay, they're calling it a fort, that's, you know, it's a well, um, is a favourite destination for those who believe in the jinns and want to have their wishes granted or their problems solved. So it's like a wishing well. This must be where we get wishing wells. You can see devotees, oh, it might be an interesting thing to look into. <laughs> you can see devotees sitting in almost every corner, lighting earthen lamps or insect sticks, praying to the jinns. Now the jinns, oh. You know, mostly the jinns are thought of as, as as bad sort of demonic entities, but obviously not to everyone. Uh, so here's an aerial view of that Baoli. Um, how they get down to the water in this one, I'm not sure. It looks like they have to sort of step down and lower a bucket or something. But this, it just looks like a flooded building. That doesn't look like like a well of any kind. Someone's come around and put some a bit of rock on the top here. But I mean, just look at the architecture. What? Why would you be doing all this if, if this is just a well? And, you know, free use well, so it's not like you're trying to keep anyone out. And just, just, just in this, how many bricks? Because, again, it's all red brick. All red brick. You've got tunnels going down them, steps leading down to the lower level of the, the step well. So they're, they're really telling us that this was all made so you can get down to the step well, you know, down to the water level. And, you know, in Europe and other parts of the world, they just dug a hole and put a bucket down. I mean, the amount of work to build this. 
there is a possibility that the roof had a small opening in the centre. We cannot be sure of this as the entire roof has collapsed with no written description of the actual architecture or architect. Originally it had entry from east to west but only the west side is open now for the public. As you enter the flight of steps take you down to the lower level where you can access apartments and the water tank. Towards the east and the west Above the entrances, it once had two domed chartre, uh, chartres with stairs on either side. On each side of the entrance, it once had two domed chartres. All right, yeah, this is definitely a well. Definitely, definitely a well, just built for water. Yep. All right. This just was interesting because um, I found this 24 Indian monuments missing and this is this old building that we saw along that cliff that big fort and as you can see it's been just smashed it's also brick as you can see and it's been destroyed and and when the architects or the archaeological survey of India went in they found as many as 24 monuments missing um, the ageable agents responsible for national heritage are missing half from Uttar Pradesh. So this is Uttar Pradesh, and and they're just missing all these all these things. They've just disappeared. What's missing? Guns of the emperor, the ruins of a copper temple, another temple, Kutumban temple, Inchiwali Gumti rock inscriptions, 12th century temple, inscriptions on fort, no, inscriptions, say they're missing inscriptions on the fort. Rock inscriptions. Ruins of three small Linga temples circa 1000 AD. What's happened? You know, they can't be missing. Have they just been destroyed? Three sites with megaliths. Tablet on the Treasury Building. See, they're taking the information. I mean, what? How do you lose a cemetery? Three tombs, cemetery, cemetery, ruins of a fort. So this has all been missing monuments are the first uh, first declared untraceable under wh after which a detailed procedure commences. The procedure to find out untraceable monuments involves verification of old records, revenue maps, referring published reports, physical inspections, and deployment of teams to trace the missing monuments. The Minister of State for Culture and Tourism, Mahesh Sharma, told the Lok Sabha in a statement, Since many are not monitored or physically protected, many monuments have been dismantled or torn down, either as building materials or to provide space in expanding towns and cities. As many as 3,686 such monuments are or will be monitored by ISRO from now on. So, yeah, these things are just being taken apart, ripped down, smashed, destroyed. Because they don't want us knowing our story, guys. This is the Red Fort again. And just... You know, just look at, I mean, look at that. Look at the symmetry there and the work that's gone into it. Built by, what was it, 4,000 men in seven years in the 1300s. Even these steps, they're not very steep, are they? They're very sloping. Maybe hard to imagine today, but there were once over a hundred of these step wells scattered across the nation's capital. Few have survived the test of time, but it may surprise some to know that the most well-kept of the remaining Baolis step wells is the one within the historic Red Fort complex, and it's 300 years old, but older than the monument itself. Really? So this is... Yeah, okay. The inside of the fort is 300 years older that well than this, even though it's all the same construction, all the same brick. Look at this, you know, just mud. Looks like it's been dug out to get this road, doesn't it? On the 12th of May, 1639, the founders of Quila y Murala, now known as the Red Fort, so that's a different story. We were told before that it was 
rebuilt by a Shah in the 1500s. Um, and they're saying the found, founding of it. The area marked for the imperial palace of the mighty moguls was on the land that was once part of Feroz Shah, okay, Tugala's city, Feroz, Ferozabad. The city was no longer in its original shape, but the once important structure, almost 300 years old, at the foundation day, was kept intact in the plan of this palace. So they're saying that, that this guy, uh, Feroz Shah, <clears throat> he built his city, or it says palace, but he built something <laughs> Um, in the 1500s, and they're saying this is the 1600s. So they're saying that the the, the step, uh, the step well was already there when this guy was. You know, the story is all very convoluted. When this guy built, so he must have built around it. Then his city fell over. What in a hundred years? Is that what they said? And you know, in a hundred years it fell over, and then they rebuilt this red, red brick. Um, fort on top of it. Arguably the most well kept of the uh, battles in Belly. Few historians question the association. There are several others who prove the claim. So, yeah, they're just saying that it was built, that the actual oldest part of this structure is that step well that we looked at. This, or this is actually a different step well, a different Baylus. As you enter, so this must, is this one they're saying was the oldest? We're not sure. Here it is again. And as you can see, there is a door down there. Can you see that? Or is that a reflection? It looks like a door. <laughs> what do you think? In fact, look at the top of this door. This is rounded. That's squared. That, that's a door. Under the water. Because <laughs> that's how you build wells, guys. Again, here we go. They've bricked all this, all this up for some reason, and just steps going down into their what we're told is a well. And look at the, uh, you know, they build like this for a well. Chunk out there. Now this is on top of one of the wells. Obviously, the roof's fallen at some point, and they say here, um, is that the right one? Another interesting element in this bailis is that the octagonal shaft of the well has a small wall structure on top of it. The struct structure used to hold the Persian wheel, which people used to pull water out of this bailey with. Towards the southern and eastern sides, the wall has tiny arcaded rooms. On the southern side, we have a small temple functioning, while on the eastern side, there is a grave. There is absolutely no documentation of their origin or even existence. It appears to be from the times of the Indian Army, don't know why, and currently maintained by the local staff. So they, they freely admit they don't even, they don't know who built this stuff. They just don't know. Uh, so yeah, just to confirm this, uh, this is the Shah, it says the fort first mentioned 1080. Uh, Stikalodi, 1487, was the first sultan of Delhi, and he moved into the fort. And then down here, it says the first um, of Agra's great Mo moguls established himself in the palace. Here he built a stairwell step, Baoli. Okay, so this is... They're saying 1526, 1530 is when this guy has built the Baoli. The, the step ladder, the step, this <laughs> step well. Then we get here, and it says, on the 12th of May, 1639, 100 years later, the area was marked for an imperial palace, and it says that the step well was 300 years older. So they're placing the step well at 1300, where up here, 15... 1530s, um, yeah, says he he built a stairwell, stepwell, Baoli, right there. So, so none of these stories make sense, guys. None of them, they, they don't even add it with each other. I mean, this is obviously Wikipedia, and this is, you know, where anyone can add it, and it does get verified, but that doesn't, you know, nothing that we find adds up with anything. Like, there's, there's 200... 200 years difference in these stories 
And then clearly other, you know, articles, they admit, we just don't know. We don't know who built this stuff. We don't have the plans. So this is a thing. And, and look at these structures. A, a well? So, there you go, guys. This one's actually gone a bit longer than I th expected it to. But, yeah, Red Brick Fort. Oh, actually, there's... There's one more thing I want to show you. Let's do this. Ah, uh, da, da 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 Oh, if I can find it. Here. Lothal, India's first port city. So this is also in the Agra region. So we're in the same area. And you can see this is a red brick construction. While the great cities of Mohedjan and Daro and Harappa were discovered by Sir John Marshall in the 20s. It is, is, it is astonishing that it would be 40 years before another significant Indus Valley civilization, a Lothal, would be found. Hundreds of sites were found strewn across Rajasthan, Delhi, Haryana and Gujarat, with 50 of them concentrated in the Gujarat alone. These discoveries revealed the the vast spread of civilization which was clearly not restricted to the Indus Valley. It extended to the Chaga Hakra river systems. In fact, over the years, some of the biggest cities of the mature Harappan era were found along the dry beds of the Gagara Hakra, also believed to be the mythical Sarasvasti river. In the clutch of the discoveries made by Lothal, made by a special milestone. So they're saying that there definitely was a very, very big civilization here you know they were building buildings they were building irrigation channels and they they seem to be along a dry riverbed that obviously is in is in the stories of india um now this is what they're calling a dock again this is red brick okay uh, rediscovered 1954 this is the region and this is what we've got um they're saying this is, is a dock. They've got a dock tank, got an entrance here for very small boats. Uh, yeah, a <laughs> cemetery. I'm, I'm not sure what they're saying. They're saying because there's water around that it was, you could come in here, then there was a tank, and then you could sort of float your boat in to the dock, I guess, load up and then take off. So this is, yeah, another shot of what they're calling the dock. You know, it's not very deep. Red brick. It just looks like a holding tank for something. I'm not sure, you know, boats, I don't know. But the basin exhibits a remarkable knowledge of hydraulics and tides, which further supports the assumption that this was a dock and not an irrigation tank, as some archaeologists contend. Now, I would say it looks more like an irrigation tank, a holding tank. Um, so it's the world's oldest dock. At the northern end of the town is a basin with a vertical wall and inlet and outlet channels. This has been identified as a tidal dockyard. Satellite images show that the river channel, now dry, would have brought in considerable volumes of water during high tide. This would have filled the basin and facilitated the sailing of boats upstream. So they're saying that boats were sailing in here, filling up with their stuff and then taking off again. But, but again, we, you know, when we were uh, reading about the guy who built all the irrigation, they were just saying all these channels were just for irrigation. You know, they tried one for 30 years. They tried sending boats down it, and it obviously didn't work. So they, they turned it back to irrigation. But this is just all red brick, guys. Oh, look at that. Just, And they're saying this is uh, like 4,000 years old. And these bricks are in pretty good shape. And the mortar hasn't been washed out of a concave there but you know not bad for 4,000 years you know, so, the, so it tells you you know they were built from kiln fired bricks um, there was also some um, bodies found around sorry if you can hear my cat meowing um, I'm almost done I'll try and pat her with my foot that might keep her quiet <laughs> um, here's some relics so yeah this is this is it guys more relics so basically, India was covered in um, these stepwells, the irrigation system, 
and this is what they call the world oldest stock which looks like a big holding place for water um, which they could then spread out you know use later on you can see it looks like it's got a higher wall here as well it just looks way too low for boats it doesn't make sense and then we have this story about the you know the red castle and when it was built the red fort you know all these different stories and you know different ages and about the the world so again now, some amazing buildings and architecture, but the stories just don't add up. Just don't add up. And of course, with India, you know, they, they suffered the same fate as many other places. The British went in in the 1800s and pretty much destroyed it from within, destroyed the, the knowledge, the culture and the heritage. And so now um, we're left with India. You know, the native Indian people don't really understand their, their heritage much anymore. And... At the same time, what's happening in India at the moment is they're going through and just destroying everything. You saw that article with all the ancient sites that have disappeared. Um, in India, India's actually got the fastest growing rate of billionaires in the world, and they are just building massive cities everywhere. They're really, really, you know, India at the moment is, has got such a divide between the haves and have-nots because half the country or more than half are still almost third world but a big percentage are getting in, you know, moving into the, unfortunately, into the Western way of living and the economic system. And, um, you know, they're making a lot of money because there's a billion people in India. And so they're building companies, making a lot of money very fast, but it's they're destroying all the history, creating a great divide. And, of course, they're turning into Westerners, you know, that they're losing their heritage and the knowledge. And they, you know, told that it's silly and they're believing that lie. So it's a shame, but that's why we're here, guys, to get some information out so people realise that, you know, his story is not our story, and it's time for us to lift the veil and open our eyes, because self-education is the way forward. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for spending some time with me, and I will catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.